Joining me today at REIT Week 2011 is Bobby Taubman, the Chairman, President, and CEO of Taubman Centers. Bobby, I understand the retail shopping trends, you know, they, they seem to change as often as, often as fashions do. Um, but the enclosed mall concept, which many people thought was going to die away by now, persists. Why do you think these properties are so endearing? Well, the, the, the regional mall has a fundamental advantage, competitive advantage over all of the forms of retailing that the customer highly values, and that's convenience. In one location, they can come and park. It's easy access to get to. It should be easy parking. They can walk into an enclosed mall environment. It's safe. It's clean. And in one stop, they can find any kind of product they're looking for. And over the years, the, the regional mall has, has been able to morph and change. It really, we think of it as a flexible envelope that as retailing changes, stores get bigger, they get smaller, they get wider, they get, they get narrower, they, they, they increase the number of classifications or assortment of goods that they have in a specific store. All those things you can accomplish within the regional mall uh, as, 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 an, as an envelope that flexible stage because what happens behind the storefront can be as big or small as you want and what the customer sees is that storefront from the common area and the common area is the only thing that in essence stays the same so it's the flexibility and the and the tremendous convenience the customer gets and that is really highly valued by our customers and, and of course that, that's not to say that there aren't malls that aren't as successful Taubman owns some of the most productive properties in, in the United States. What do you think is the most important factor in determining whether or not a mall is successful? Well, at the end of the day, everything translates into sales. The, you know, the market opportunity, the densities, how well you built and planned the mall, what it looks like, the customers feel good in the center. But, you know, sales is all about the shops. You got to have the best stores because at the end of the day, if you're going to a restaurant, you don't really care where the restaurant is, which care about is how good the food is. Well, to us, the food, the, the, the real product is, the shop, is what the shopper wants out of those stores. So we're going to have the best department store anchors that are very responsive to the market demographics. And then against that, we're going to have all the stores. You need at least 100 to 150 stores to really uh, uh, completely give that customer that full comparative shopping opportunity so that they know they can find anything they're looking to, anything they're looking for. So what we, you know, all of it, you know, it, it's a sort of a positive cycle of activity. If you have the right stores, you get the right customers. If you have the right customers, they spend a lot in the stores. And then the best stores that are new and emerging, the freshest merchandise, they all want to be in the same location with each other. And it becomes a positive synergistic uh, activity for all the stores and the shoppers themselves. Again, it's this positive cycle that really creates a great shopping center. And some of the, the most well-known and most respected names in the read industry are in the mall sector, including your own. Um, do you think that we may be ready for some consolidation in the sector as companies look to increase their market share? There's roughly 1,200 malls in America. And when you look at the public mall companies, the REITs, uh, like ourselves and Simon and General Growth, Maestridge and others, uh, you, you will see residing in them at least 75% of the malls in America. And when you look at the top 300 malls, which are the ones that everybody wants to own, it's probably 90% consolidated at this point. There will continue to be consolidation over time, and especially in those uh, uh, upper-end properties as a family that might own one decides that they need to liquefy for estate purposes or the like. But, you know, it, it's largely consolidated today but it will continue. Bobby, thank you very much for joining us. It's my pleasure. I'm delighted to be here for NAREIT. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.